guys, I'm Blake. I'm Brianna. And we are the Untitled Network. Today we're going to be talking about Ernest Scared Stupid and Ernest Goes to Jail, two Jim Varney films starring Ernest P. Worrell. Ernest is a very popular character from the, well, uh, honestly, over a long period of time, but predominantly over the 80s and 90s. He was very big in my childhood, very, very prominent character, a uh, very wholesome type character. These are really fun movies. They're very simple and wholesome. Very. And um, I, I think to say that I absolutely suggest them is an understatement because it's just complete turn off your brain and enjoy what you're watching type entertainment, which is always a relief, especially these days. So first of all, just general overall opinion. Ernest Scared Stupid is one of my favorite Halloween movies of all time. Um, I've always loved this movie. I've loved it since childhood. I think it's a great representation of how times have changed as far as the way that we represent horror and things of that nature to our children in, in the modern era of, of telecommunications and, and mass media. It's, it's a lot more immersive as far as the storytelling goes. It's a lot more drawing in the way that it it tells its story and creates these very real characters uh, they're not really painted in this picturesque manner they look like normal people they act like normal people they have the tone of normal people everything is shot in a way that presents as it presents itself as if it's a normal place it's not painted to be this overly idealistic image of what you believe something ought to be you know, uh, Ernest Scared Stupid is really, really great. Uh, Ernest Goes to Jail, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, I do suggest it. I do really like it. I don't think it's as good as Ernest Scared Stupid. I think Ernest Scared Stupid is the best of the Ernest films. That's just a personal opinion. I don't think that everyone will feel that way, but that's how I feel. Ernest Goes to Jail, pretty good movie. Very funny, very silly. It definitely captures the silly a lot more than Ernest Scared Stupid, which is strange because Ernest Scared Stupid actually has like fantasy creatures in it, uh, whereas Ernest Goes to Jail does not, and is just set in reality, and <laughs> has jokes centering around jury duty, and things of that nature. It's, it's, it's very funny, and simple, and silly in the way that it's funny. I, I would akin it to like, a, a, in the current like market, like a Medea. Uh, goes to jail type film. Yeah. Like, like he really does have a lot of the wholesome and like good family unifying messages that Tyler Perry has with the Medea films, without being overbearingly religious or anything like right. that. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with talking about religion in films or anything like that. There isn't. There just isn't any of that present in these films. But yeah, they're both they're both great films, and I wanted to get that out of the way. What are your general consensus on the two films? Um, okay, so... As seems to be a common theme with these movies, um, I've... I had actually never even heard of these, uh, until you brought them up to me. Yeah. And I don't know how I had never heard of them, honestly, because they're obviously quite popular and there's a lot of them, so the odds of me not even hearing about one of them is weird to me, but, <laughs> I mean, whatever, here I'm, we are. I'm very surprised you didn't hear about Ernest Scared Stupid. I feel like one of your, some friend you have must have seen it. Uh, I, I mean, maybe they have, but we've never talked about it. Right. So, I mean, there's that. So, like, I, I don't know, I've just, I've never heard of them, but I'm really, really, really glad that you showed them to me. Yeah. Because they are just, they're super silly, they're really fun, they're they are very family friendly, but in a, a good, entertaining, wholesome way, not like how a lot of films are today, where it's just... Yeah. Oh yeah. ...too much, but, like, the, these, these are good. These are not marketing a toy line to you. Right. Like, the, the, <laughs> Obviously. This is real wholesome. It, it actually has, like, a story, and very it's, wholesome. it's engaging, and yeah. interesting, and it's interesting to all audiences, not just children. It's actually, like, it's fun for everybody. Um, that isn't to say that there isn't an earnest toy. I'm not saying <laughs> that. There are earnest toys, and I know that already. I know there's earnest merchandise. 
very aware. But the point of the movie isn't to sell that. It's it's to it's to give you an experience. Yes. Uh, which is what movies should be. And I don't know if I have a favorite between the two yet. I, I think I still need to watch all of the other ones before I decide for yeah. sure which one is my absolute favorite. I, I like them both equally, but I think it's because they're set... They have two different stories going on that I can't really... Well, from my understanding, like, two of the, like, more favorited films in the series are... Ernest Scared Stupid and Ernest Goes to Camp. That's what I've noticed. Which is that Ernest Goes to Camp will be the next. It oh, will yeah. be in the next video. We haven't decided what the fourth film will be, but we uh, recently discovered there's a lot more than Ernest what Goes we to thought. Camp will be there. Yeah, I forgot there were <laughs> as many as there are, which is why we had to segment this out because we were just gonna watch Ernest Goes to Camp and make three in this video and then do like three in the next video, but there are far more than that, so. <laughs> so many. Yeah, so we're gonna have to break this down into quite a few more videos. Um, but overall, like, I just, I love them both. I, I really liked Goes to Jail because it felt more, like, adult-oriented. So it was, it was funnier to me, because like, a, a lot of it is about like, having jury duty and actually yeah. being in prison and like, whatever goes on in prison, and kids aren't necessarily going to understand half of no, that. No, Which is, all. you know, it's fine. It's still, like, really silly the way that they set it up so that anybody can laugh and enjoy the jokes. But it's it's deeper and better understood if you're older and know what's going on. And I think I, I liked that about that one. But I really liked Scared Stupid because I just love Halloween movies, and that one is just ridiculous, and I just love everything in it. I can't pick a favorite between those two. Well, yet, uh, but I mean, I've had a long time to think. About yeah, this is whereas still fresh. I've had like a monthish, yeah, less than a month. I, so I've, I've had tons of time to think. Yeah, about this. I I need. It's to... not really fair. <laughs> you actually got to grow up with these. I did not. Yeah. So and as somebody who really does like Halloween movies, I will say like this is one of my favorites. This is absolutely one of my favorites. Yeah. And a lot of my favorites are children's movies. Well, because they're they're good. Yeah. yeah, they're wholesome. I'd be lying if I said I didn't instantly love this movie, because I did. I, when I saw it as a kid, I absolutely adored this movie. Uh, it relies on practical effects, which was amazing. It had this thing, there was this trope in the 90s that was hugely popular, which was the fucking main character that created contraptions for no reason. Yes. It's a strange trope that was hugely popular back then mm -hmm. um, well because it's the Doc Brown trope it's the Christopher Lloyd trope it's it's the back to the future thing yeah the weird dude the weird old guy you know Pee Wee Herman's house at the beginning of the movie <laughs> when it's making yeah. his breakfast but yeah I, I was kind of a fan like right from the very beginning I kind of lost my point there for a second but <laughs> it, it 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 was it was pretty much love at first sight with that one. Whereas, like, the other Ernest films, they're kind of on a ebb and flow. Like, they, they go in and out of, like, what I like more or less. Right. Ernest Goes to Jail is a really good one. But uh, I couldn't tell you where I place it with the others until I, like, go back and rewatch all the rest of them. Yeah. But Ernest Scared Stupid holds a special place just because, you know, it has so many little things that it hits on that it's really good. Like, and... Uh, you know, like I was saying with the practical effects and, and with him being like the gadget guy and all that stuff, it just kind of holds up really well. I watch it now and it still looks great and feels great mm -hmm. uh, and it feels really wholesome and silly. This isn't one of those movies that you come back to five, five years later and technology is advanced and so now it's just awful. This is a movie that because they did it with their hands, it's smooth and it still works. There are certain strengths that Ernest Goes to Jail has that Ernest Scared Stupid doesn't. Like, Ernest Goes to Jail has a much better color palette. You know yes. what I mean? Uh, but, yes, I fully agree with that. Uh, other than that, it's 100% like love at first sight. And, I, and, and, you know, but I appreciate that it will take you some time to decide which ones are your favorite. But, you know, that's kind of why that one is my favorite. Yeah. You're general opinion between the two? Like, do you have a, one that you favor more than the other? Uh, I don't know. I, I find myself leaning towards go to jail, but I think maybe just because it has more 
mature is not really the word, but like well, no, it's more... its audience is certainly it's it's an audience that is asked to know a little bit more about the real world. Yeah. It's not just this fantasy story that's detached from reality in some town that you've never heard of and blah blah blah. Uh, like this is you know a story about a person who goes during an idiot and goes to jail and so forth. Yeah. So like these are real things. So I, yeah, it's definitely asking a little bit more of its audience than are scared stupid. But I mean, that isn't to say that I don't like that one either. Well, there are no I mean, ch there are no children characters in it. Ernest goes to jail. That's true. All of the characters are adults. Yeah. Like it's it's more like his comedy was not like made for children. It was made for everyone. Right, yeah. It's pretty universal. It's very palatable to pretty much any demographic. Um, he was just like a kind-hearted, silly guy. And there's a lot out there that you can watch. There's a lot of... A lot of these movies are available to watch on YouTube. Mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of his TV commercials and movies that he put out, little VHS tapes that he put out that are compilations, those are available. Uh, hey Vern, like that stuff, that's all available. So this, it's not hard to find. It's a type of comedy that really doesn't limit itself, and it's very universally wholesome. But to get into the meat of it, I think with, I don't know, I think with at least Ernest Scared Stupid, the first thing I want to talk about is the cast, because I think it has a really good cast, even for the little kids. And I wanted to uh, mention this. So I thought, like, that Ernest Scared Stupid is a movie that's carried by children. Ernest is almost a secondary character within this story. Uh, you follow these children throughout the story, this weird buttercream gang of, of kids in this town, and like most things in the 90s, one of them uh, has a parent who's a sheriff. Uh, that was a big, that was another thing. This, 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 it's a very atypical film, like it's, it's very trope heavy. But uh, Shay a Astor, uh, she is in the film, she's the little girl in the film. And of course, there's only one little girl. Uh, uh -huh. uh, there is one thing that I'll say about the Ernest films: they're not very culturally diverse. That is, that is, that is a fact, uh, and that's it's sad but true. But Shay Astor, she uh, just in another weird connection. She is Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character's romantic partner in uh, Third Rock from the Sun. But yeah, I, I thought that connection was was nice. But but I love the cast of of Ernest Scared Stupid, and I think they carry it really well. There are some repeat customers as far as Ernest goes, such as the there are these brothers that show up in like every one of the Ernest films, and they're just kind of uh, hackneyed hucksters. Kind of they they they're just. They're, they're doing the best they can with what they have, and they're just trying to move into the 21st century in the most back catalog way possible. <laughs> they're, they're very reminiscent to me of the traveling salesmen that would sell, you know, potions and <laughs> tinctures. Well, no, I... So... You been feeling down? <laughs> so I don't... What I had read earlier was off of like some wiki page, so there's no guarantee that like whatever was on there was totally accurate. I was just kind of skimming through it to get information. And so you've got Tom and Bobby in Scared Stupid. They're the ones that are like doing whatever to, to make money, right? Yeah, they so, own their little shop where yeah. they, they sell things. And they sell Ernest like, what was it, like almost $2,000 worth of absolute nonsense? <laughs> Yeah, I, it may like, have been more than that. It was a lot, uh, whatever it, it was. was. It was a great deal of, of anti-troll equipment. Yes, okay, and then you've got Bobby... Integral to, to his plan. <laughs> yeah, and then you have Bobby and Chuck in uh, Ernest Goes to Jail. Yes, they're the security guards for the bank. Yes. And what I... I, I'm, I need more clarification on this, but what I read was that all three of them are related. However, Chuck doesn't always appear... Um, and in fact, the actor that plays him also doesn't appear as Chuck in the in every movie that he's in. He also plays like other characters. So I, I don't. I need to read more about that. But yeah, but Bobby is always Bobby. Yeah, Bobby's always Bobby, whether yeah. or not he's related to Chuck yeah, or Tom the, or that's, whoever. That's Bill Berg that plays Bobby, and he is always Bobby, and he's he's 
a mostly silent uh, He's amazing. Yeah, he's, <laughs> like, I love him. <laughs> Bobby's the best. He is one of the, the funniest, like, characters that I've ever seen. He's, he's the silent Bob of this movie. <laughs> Literally. So to speak. Like, he is, he is silent Bob. It's, it's uh, great. It's pretty incredible. And anybody who knows the Kevin Smith films or is familiar with the Jersey Chronicles or anything like that watches this film, you should absolutely agree with me on that. <laughs> like, like there is no reason why you shouldn't see what I'm saying there. But yeah, he, Bobby is a great character. Uh, especially Ernest Goes to Jail. Just yes, really, oh my god, really I loved over. him yeah. in that way. That was, that was great. He had so much personality, and, and it was just in his actions, because he doesn't talk, I think, until like the very end, and he only says maybe one or two words. Yeah. And like, that's it. That's all you hear out of his mouth. But he'll like make like noises of mostly disapproval <laughs> uh, throughout. Um, but and I'm not sure if he speaks at all in Ernest Scared Stupid. I don't, I don't um, think he does, not that I remember. The scene in Ernest Goes to Jail where he's practicing his marksmanship <laughs> in the middle of the house. Yeah. Uh, he, he's a very Rambo-esque character. In Ernest Scared Stupid, my favorite like show of his personality was when his brother was presenting the sales pitch to Ernest for all of the anti-troll stuff. And he was in the background on a drum set doing the rim shot <laughs> on the drums yep. every time his brother would have a punchline within his sail. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I just loved that so much because it, like, it's so representative of who he is uh, and like their relationship, their dynamic. Yeah. Little man and big man. It's it's very nice to see, kind of in something modern, because we're all familiar with it from you know Laurel and Hardy and, and stuff like that. He he really steals the show. He steals every scene that he's in. But the the children aren't as scared stupid. They carry it really well. They act really well for for child actors, especially in that time period. Yeah. They do a very good job. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that they weren't restricted by casting, because you could be just a normal person back then. You didn't have to be painted, like I said before, you didn't have to be this idealistic version of a human being. Yeah. And that was really nice. It was nice to it was nice to feel represented just as an average person, not necessarily as some, you know, sub demographic of society that I represent, but like just kind of as a normal person. Yeah. Not as some idealistic image. I agree. Um it it felt kind of weird that, I mean, you know, whatever, 90s, 80s, 90s, you had like that set characteristic of children, so you've got the one girl who's obviously more intelligent than anybody else in that town, and then you've got the nerdy boy, mm -hmm. and then you've got the other boy that is either a jock or is the son of somebody important in the town, which was what we got there with him being the son of uh, the sheriff who, of course, doesn't believe in whatever it is that's going around in this town. Not that any of that was a problem, I mean, that whole thing worked very well with this movie, the way it was yeah, structured. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not I mean, sure that, like, I think the only person who was truly skeptical about it was Ernest. In, in the movie, the only person who was really outwardly skeptical about, like, whether or not the troll thing was real or anything like that, it was Ernest. Because that's how the entire thing gets set in motion, is his skepticism in giving the speech that actually releases the troll. He's he's like yeah, that's true. tauntingly fucking giving this speech, <laughs> and it's just you know the the undoing of the entire town. Yeah, you were saying that the dynamic of the kids you you had seen like that kind of like yeah that, the that's kids. like well, kind of like the heavy set bully. Yeah. You know with and and it's it's really funny because he looks he kind of looks a lot like the the heavy set bully in Paranorman. Yeah. Um, so that's like that's really funny to me because it, it it does really follow a formula and you can see it really clearly. It's it's like painfully obvious, it's especially pretty, now. Pretty transparent. But I mean, like it's not a problem. Like it doesn't make it bad. It's just no, not at all. It's just obvious, and it's like, well, okay, this is how this is gonna go. Then that's fine. Yeah, I wouldn't say any of it's bad, and certainly for its time, it's very good. I saw a lot worse, it, even produced by larger companies. Yeah. People, like, things produced out of Disney's workshops were... I saw some worse stuff coming out of there than Ernest Scared Stupid, for sure. Yeah. 
and the thing is, is it, it didn't suffer from a bad budget. It looked great. Yeah. Uh, the whole movie looked good. As far as the like children in the cast goes, it is really like that common setup. The reason that I mentioned diversity though is there are no representations of ethnic diversity whatsoever in this film. Like yeah. at at all. It is Eartha Kit and that is it. And the the thing is, is she is great and and she is an amazing actress and I love her to death, but it does kind of act as the only thing over time that makes this movie suffer. The fact that the children weren't a little more diverse, I think, held it back a little bit, but I th the children that were there did a very good job. Yeah. And the ones that... The, I, I kind of applaud the people writing the story and the casting, because the characters that, like, sort of weren't as interesting and you didn't cling to immediately, because you kind of clung to the, the, the main couple immediately. Yeah. Well, those were the kids that went first, that, that, that disappeared first, and that, you know, went the way of the troll earliest, were the ones that didn't have the biggest impression on the audience, and I really applaud this, the, the casting and the storytelling for utilizing that well. Uh, that isn't to say that those children did, did a bad job, everybody did a good job, yeah. um, especially for child actors, but they just knew what they were doing and how they structured what they were they did a very good job. Back to Eartha Kitt, though, uh, she was, you know, and, and to follow the trope, the crazy old person. Mm -hmm. and that, like, nobody goes to talk to, but everybody knows about them. Yeah, and, you know, if it wasn't a trope you were already familiar with, like, as a film fan, I'm familiar with tons of stuff because I've seen hundreds and hundreds of movies. Uh, she is the wise old black person of the movie. You, you're probably familiar with that trope now because Key and Peele did a very funny sketch on their popular television series several years back that was about a, a wise old black person battle uh, but uh, you, you should know it from that but she it's a trope that used to come up all the time so what they did is they killed two birds with one stone they made her the wise old black person while also making her the magic you know key to the you know mysticism of the story and they tied her back into the story later by giving her this uh, attachment to when the troll was initially released and her brother and sister who were taken by the troll when it came around the first time. So they, they got two birds with one stone there. And I'll, I'll applaud them for that, but I will say it really isn't positively representative of how they felt about diversity in the portraying of the story. Aside from that, the cast is pretty flat. Uh, they're who they need to be. There's a handful of people in the story that really matter. And everyone else has about one to three lines that they say that help develop the story. And then their job's done. Yeah. And that's all of the rest of the characters. They play their job well. Everyone who was cast in those parts did it well. The three adults that truly matter are Ernest, and the two Huckster brothers, and that's it. And then the rest is about the kids. Because, again, this is a child-centric movie. Some kids may be jarred by this. The practical effects do make the monster look pretty gruesome, and for a small child, it might be a bit much. Yeah, it's, I mean, it was a bit much for me when he first showed up. Like, yeah, you fully. didn't like the goopiness. It was the, gross. The slimy grossness. Uh. Yeah, there's was, a lot of goop. There's a lot yeah, of slime. Yeah, he's very mucus. slimy and. Yeah, there's a lot of mucus. There's a lot of boogers <laughs> it's going so on. Gross. Like it's like he they they pretty much like sweat boogers. It's disgusting. Is, is well, what's going so on he's there. got what is he's got two noses. Yeah. Two noses on his face, so that's four nostrils. But there's there's snot Dripping everywhere. Dripping slime and snot. You know. He's drooling constantly. Yeah. There's like. I'm pretty He's sure there was weird, stuff coming out of his ears, and there's like tentacles flopping around, yeah, and stuff like that. Uh, so it's, for a small child, that probably would be yeah. pretty intimidating. But mm -hmm. he's not. I don't know. Oh, it's not horrifying. No, like overall, he's uh, he's yeah. once you once you get over We're the not, initial he, shock, he's, he's not a cinnabite. He's not. He's you know, it's not a. a, a a Lovecraftian yeah, beast. Yeah, no, any he's sort. just gross. <laughs> it's because <laughs> yeah, like once you get over just the initial introduction of him, then it's like okay, well you're just 
nasty and silly looking, so that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, I'd say that the cast is pretty boilerplate, but they all do a good job. All of the sets and scenery was great. It was all chosen very well. It all looked very, very good. Yeah. It, it made me feel cozy. Yes. It made me feel comfortable. It made me feel like I was back in the 90s watching this on one of those, you know, knit couches with the wooden <laughs> armrests and yeah. stuff like that, you know? <laughs> It's, it's a nice feeling. You do get that feeling when you watch these movies. Yeah, everything really fell together very well. And this is a movie that utilizes an animal actor in it. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. In the form of Ernest's dog, Rimshot, which is very funny. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> the dog in the film is, is a very, very good actor. Yeah. And I, I'm not... 100%, but he looks very similar to Wishbone and might be one of the actors that That's played what I Wishbone. Was thinking. The dog does a great job. Yeah. He really handles the job of of playing the part well because the dog becomes an integral part of the story. It draws draws a lot of importance yeah. uh, to that character and a lot of attention. But other than that, it was it was just a really nice wholesome film. It, it felt good to watch it. Yes. It it definitely feels like one of those classic Halloween movies. Oh, for sure. Like, yeah. Like it's it's just one Gives of those. Gives you that those... Halloween Town one feel. Yeah, just that. Yeah. yeah. Or don't look under the bed, or Mom has a date with a vampire. Yeah. Or the littlest vampire, or something like that. I love that one movie. Of those movies. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. It, it's it's just a good, mm. warm, fuzzy movie. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 nice. It's a good family thing. If you want to watch something with a family member with a friend and you want it to be very neutral, this is a great thing to watch. Yes. Yeah, but as far as Ernest Scared Stupid goes, that's that's pretty much it. It's it's just fun. Yep. It's, a, it's a positive feeling movie. But anyway, Ernest Goes to Jail. Ernest Goes to Jail. Let's hop over to this one. Okay, so the tone of Ernest Goes to Jail is a lot more adult in that you do have to have some awareness of what goes on in the world to really kind of grasp what's going on. So like, the, the two main settings are a prison and a bank really gets kids going. Oh, yeah. So uh, exciting. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of shtick and a lot of slapstick oh, yeah. in the Ernest films, so that will kind of keep a child entertained. This one's definitely directed more towards an older audience. I'd maybe even say like high school, like teenagers, like late teens could probably get into it. Yeah. But I think it's, you know, these, these are family films, so smaller children can watch it and still enjoy it. There's a lot of slapstick that comes out of the two uh, brothers that work as security. What I think is super interesting too is that, yeah. so when I was a kid, whatever it was that I was watching, if it had bright crazy colors, I was into it. Oh yeah. So the color I think it's, it's interesting that you get the bright crazy colors in the prison. Yeah, that's, it's the best because everything's so, very normal and neutral. Yeah. Cream colors, wood palettes, uh, like wood grain frame and stuff like that. It's very basic when you're in the bank. But see, that's where you get the two brothers. They come in and they're very entertaining. Yeah, because incredibly they're incredibly in, silly. In the bank. But when you're in the prison, you don't necessarily get that. No. So instead, you get these bright, crazy colors. Bright yeah. Neon pink. Incredibly and... avant garde, like camera angles. Yeah. And uh, editing decisions made with like how they shot uh, like long perspective angles down like hallways between the sets of, of prison cells. Mm -hmm. uh, really strange decisions made there that worked effectively. Yeah. Very effective. Looked good. It worked but so strange. Like you'll you'll watch the film and you'll immediately be taken by the color palette in the prison. Yes, it's it is, it is it very is obscure. Off the rails. Like, <laughs> the video editing decisions and the effects made in... I don't know if the cameras were... or the effects were made in camera or they were after effects, but it's really, really jarring the first time that they do it because it's a lot of like layered imagery yeah. moving with these crazy colors at this very strange like twisting angle. It's just very, very strange and it doesn't really serve a purpose because usually that type of camera angle and that kind of type of lighting and colorization would represent something of a character like going through a mental process or some deterioration of sanity or something like that. This doesn't really do that. It's kind of just an in-between scenes thing. And it's pretty and it looks it is, nice, yeah. but it just doesn't really serve any function. 
but yeah, the color palette was awesome, especially the outfits. Yes, oh my god. The outfits on the guards <laughs> were amazing. The prison guards look so amazing. <laughs> and this, like, hot magenta. Yeah, and I, I really like how... Because at first I wasn't even sure if the outfit itself was actually that color, or if it was just the... the the lighting. the lighting because oh, like yeah. you get these crazy bright like yellows and greens and blues and like really weird really really there weird are no colors natural natural colors yeah the it, it's used all when you're indoors at all yeah it's all, at all very like bright and weird and very contrasting but like it works really well so when I when they first showed the guards I wasn't sure if it was just the lighting on their outfits mm. was making it that color but it wasn't until a little later that I realized, oh no, their outfits are just bright magenta, uh, yeah. and it's amazing. They show a guard <laughs> outside, yeah, and you can see clearly that it's just crazy. And I love that they have enormous shoulder pads. Yeah, <laughs> they stick out like here. Their... It's very cartoony. <laughs> it looks like something from Rocco's Modern Life. It's great. It's very interesting choices there. You can, you can definitely tell that the people who made this may, and this is speculation may have slightly been under the influence of narcotics. Not Jim Varney. I don't believe Jim Varney was. <laughs> but the people who put this together and the people who edited it and colorized it and chose the costumes and stuff like that, I'm just saying cocaine was very popular at the time. <laughs> and these may or may not be all the symptoms of that. Um, so I I don't I don't know, but you definitely get that vibe when you're watching this. It is a little trippy when uh, when you get the indoors in the prison. It's because like so the color palette's amazing and it's super contrasting. Yeah. It's it's like the color palette from the end of the movie, the thing. It's a lot of magentas and purples and blues yeah, and just it's like, like it's a great color palette. It's one of my favorite color palettes. So aside from the color palette, the design of everything was really interesting too because so you've got these giant everything's cartoony you've got these giant mm -hmm. shoulder pads and the hats they're wearing are huge yeah and you had one uh prison guard that had a giant mustache mm -hmm. yeah. like a very strange giant mustache that went all the way down like the design work was really really odd and like that's where you get like the tilted camera angles and the like set design stuff that was really strange because when you're in the actual prison cell itself it's really weird set design and it, yeah it's and it's like a narrowing box so yeah. like it's really wide at one end and then it looks like it gets super tight at the other end yeah and i thought that was super strange just uh again only a theory <laughs> but i wanted to ask you what did you think of the <laughs> What did you think of the hairstyles in the movie? I mean, are you, do you mean anybody in particular? Well, I'll say, just... I'll say in particular, Ernest's two cellmates. Well, hold on, let, let's jump back. Okay. Let me explain a little bit of the story first. <laughs> so, Ernest is a janitor at a bank who gets jury duty, and there is a prisoner in this prison who is like an exact look-alike for Ernest. He look, you know, he's also played by Jim Varney. His name is Nash. And the man on trial in Ernest's jury duty summons is an associate of Nash. And so what they do is they take the jury to the actual prison in order to investigate the scene of the crime because it's a murder that happened in the prison. While they're there, they kidnap Ernest and switch him out with Nash. And so that's how Ernest gets put in jail. That's important to say. So when Ernest is in jail, his two cellmates are associates of this Nash guy. And essentially it's their job to make sure that Ernest serves out Nash's sentence, which turns out is a death sentence. Uh, you know, bum, bum, bum. It didn't really need to get that dark. The movie was already this funny, nice guy was in jail. Yeah. Bad enough. No, they gave him a death sentence as well, with a very tight time limit, too. So yeah, it was very short. Resolving this issue was a problem. Because it was like within days of him yeah, even being mm -hmm. in there that his like sentence was going to be 48 hours yeah. max. Like, he was not in there for very long. That. Meanwhile, the Nash guy is outside wrecking his life. Yeah. Uh, just <laughs> living as Ernest and destroying his life. The two cellmates that Ernest has, I wanted to know how you felt about their hair. 
they had some very they had their general design, all of their costuming, yeah. everything looked very very interesting. Very I think interesting. okay, so I didn't really have any kind of like real I don't know reaction to it. I think just because I still had it in my head that obviously this is an older movie, so like. No. Mm -mm. But no. I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously, like as the film went, I was like, I don't really know. No, the I hair don't... on um, <laughs> at least one of them should have stood out. I, well, they did. I seriously. mean, so it, like, I guess thinking on it now, the way I interpret it was, well, the whole prison is just a cartoon so oh 100 percent. Wh whoever is important is obviously going to have these weird cartoonish attributes about them so whatever makes them stand out and i guess it would also sure. it would also help in the case that like you're in a prison full of all these people so like you gotta have your your important characters stand out against them somehow if they have to all wear like the same uniform or whatever so well, yeah, but th this character has a, a half-foot-tall, high-top fade mullet. Uh, yeah. Um, and that's actually the guy that I was looking up his name. It's, it's Randall Craig Cobb. That's the gentleman that was also in Ace Ventura. Yeah. Um, but he's the guy who has the high-top fade, who works for Nash, but ends up being a nice guy in the end and helping out Ernest, seeing that Ernest is a genuinely nice person and doesn't yeah. deserve to die for nothing. <laughs> By I, the way, Ernest makes it to the electric chair. He does. He, he sits in it. He gets electrocuted. He sits in it and gets and it electrocuted. And it gives him superpowers. <laughs> it gives him superpowers. It's amazing. Um, not to say, though, that like they didn't hint at that before, which I, I will say I really liked how they foreshadowed all of that. That was that was good. I liked that. Oh yeah. Like I really, really liked how they they set that up. He gets electrocuted up. and he becomes magnetized. Yes. He, he turns him into Magneto. Does he it, becomes happens, Magneto. Yeah, and I think doesn't that that happens from three times in the movie? The um, whole movie? No, it happens in the so. beginning. It, it happens in the beginning, and then it happens. It happens when he's at home. At home, and then it happens at the end. Uh, I think twice end. also. Because it happens once in the electric chair, and then it happens once when he's in the... There's this big showdown in the bank, and he yeah. is electrocuted there, too. Because there is a cage that is an electrocuted cage <laughs> that the two security guards have installed that drops down on the bad guys if, if anyone's ever trying to rob the bank. Now, that is if the bad guy is in it's that standing right. <laughs> very specific spot <laughs> yeah. that the cage is over... And it kind of takes a second for the cage to come down, so, mm, I don't know. <laughs> but, like, I appreciated how, like, even that, like, the stuff, so, like, randomly, you're cutting back to the bank, and it's, like, the end of the day, and the, the brothers are showing the owner of the bank, like, look at these cool tools that we have to stop any robbers oh, yeah. if it happens. And it, like, honestly doesn't matter at all in that instance. But it's just there to show you that this is where all this stuff comes in later. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> When exactly. Ernest comes in to save the day. So. It's, it's these weird, quirky characters uh, showing their boss all of these things that they got to protect his bank. Yeah. And later on in the movie, it will be what Ernest utilizes and they utilize to save the bank from Nash. It's pieced together so well in that anybody can obviously tell like well this is going to come in handy later oh, kind of yeah, thing 100%. so like it's it's like getting an item in a video game yeah. and then immediately running into something you need to use yeah. the item on and like it, it's not it's not at all like they're trying to insult anybody's intelligence or anything no, it's not just at all. like but this isn't a movie that asks any intelligence right. of its Yeah, audience. so it's it's just it's set up so well in that you can still shut your brain off yeah and still acknowledge that, oh, okay, 100%. this is... It's silly. Yeah. Like, this is still useful. And I... And, like, with him getting electrocuted, that it happens several times throughout, so that you're aware, like, obviously, this this has well, to play some kind of... you also see it, like, graduate, too, so each time... Yeah, it, it gets his, stronger. His, and... his, he gets more and more powerful with his Magneto <laughs> abilities, Which you is know? so silly, but, like, it works. It just works. Like, he even acts like it's normal too, which I think yeah. is really funny. Like that has happened to him on multiple occasions previous to this movie. 
Oh like, yeah. The way he no, acts he, about he it. He treats he treats misfortune very haphazardly. Yeah. So like, it's just like that's just that's just what happens to yeah, him. Yeah. He that's, approaches that's it in a way like oh well. Yeah. Like, Which I think helps a lot too with oh, the yeah. humor in because general. Because it's all about this. These movies are so positive. Even yeah. when he's in the worst situation, and even when he's not feeling great, they, they still try to a, attempt to encapsulate positivity in what they're showing the audience. Yeah. And they do a good job. It's entertaining, it's well written, mm -hmm. it's well put together. And even if they're just doing it through visuals, uh, it's really well done. Like, uh, the color palette helps to change the bleak environment of being in a prison mm -hmm. to yeah. something that's very, very entertaining and visually stimulating to be a part of. Yeah. So, great job there. With Ernest Scared Stupid, the cast was really great. Of course, you had some repeat customers, but you had the other brother that was played by, uh, what is his name again? That's right, uh, Gaylord Sartain, and they managed their scenes really well. The romantic partner to Ernest in the film isn't really a super important character. It's just something that kind of has to exist in a story. You always have to have that romantic whatever. Well, I think um, it was it's more not necessarily that she had to be there, but it was more like there needed to be something else at stake when Ernest was in prison and Nash was out. Oh, yeah, I, I suppose, think but that the, the problem is is that it wasn't until the third act that they actually or it wasn't until late late into Ernest being in the jail, like his his short time there, that he even learned that that was what was going on. With right. Ash, you know. So. I'm just, like just in general, like even for the audience, because yeah. we knew what was going oh, on, absolutely. and we were seeing what was happening while Ernest did not, and so it became more of like we want Ernest to get out so that he can mm. get Nash to leave because this isn't a good situation for anybody. Yeah. Um, but I think that was more of like the reason why she was there. Because oh yeah, I mean like oh well, well she's he, the damsel in distress. Yeah, because like, it, it was like oh well you know Nash took my pregnant. job. Okay, well he works tons of odd jobs randomly, so like I don't think that would have ever been a problem. But no, it it was she was like the big reason. Like I needed to get out and save her. Well, I mean after the fact. Initially, he didn't even realize he was in jail, and then once he realized he was in jail, he didn't yeah. learn about her. He, li he didn't learn about Nash taking his job until later on into that. Because it was uh, his, the cellmates that told him that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that was like way into him even being there, right? Yeah. Yeah. He'd already been there for a so, while. So. I mean, there aren't many characters in this movie. There's really not. Um, for um, as many faces as there are, there's not very many. Like, I mean, characters. Charles Napier plays the. Uh, prison warden, and that's a huge waste because he's a great actor. Uh, and the prison warden doesn't really matter. He's just yeah. there to reinforce that Nash is a bad guy by saying how bad Nash is and how much he hates Nash all the time. And to reinforce that he has 48 hours or less before he's in the electric chair. Yeah. That's really pretty it. Pretty much. Pretty much. He's ready to see Nash die. Yeah. He's. It's a huge, Very excited to see Nash. Huge waste of that act. Do they ever say why Nash was in prison? Um, I think they do, but I don't recall. Like, I mean, why he's just he was... generally a bad guy, and he's like. I mean, not that bad, it matters. You he's know? the bad guy from all those '90s movies. Yeah. He's not just a bad guy. He's like the kingpin of the bad guys. He has other bad guys working for him. Like he has a name in this jail. Like nobody yeah. talks to him. Everybody seems to owe him money for yeah, who knows what. I don't know. Him. It's, yeah. Even though, like, I don't, it doesn't matter, but to me it does, like, why he was there. Because I just want to know, like, no, I why mean, were you in there? Why were you sentenced it's to, to but the... But, I mean, these movies are so short. And yeah, I mean, so like, it overall, point. it just doesn't matter. Yeah. But I would like to know, <laughs> just out of curiosity, what got you here? How did you get caught? Why does everybody seem to bow down to you? Because yeah. Because you don't seem... How that... long have you been here? Yeah, and, like... How is it that coincidentally, when you have like two days left to live, that you somehow you meet this find doppelganger, a way out? Yeah. Um, who has been in the general vicinity the entire time you've been here? Yeah, like, like he's never been known. in the same county because he got jury duty. Which is also weird. So, like, what were the circumstances in which he got caught, and how did nobody else in in the area realize that he looked just like Ernest? Yeah. Or vice versa? Because everyone like, knows Ernest. Yeah. 
So like how? <laughs> yeah, but we're thinking too hard. That's what I'm saying. You exactly. Have to shut off your brain and watch these movies. None of these questions matter. And see, like, and the thing is, is you know, this is a perfectly enjoyable and entertaining movie oh, without sure. getting any of those answers. Like, it just none of that matters. He's the bad guy. You know, he's the bad guy. Ernest is the good guy. He's and the that's... bad guy because his hair is slicked back. One of his eyes is squinted, and he talks with a rough gristle in his voice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I just want to say too, like he was really good at playing. Oh yeah, both Jim Varney parts. is an amazing character actor. Like he is so good at that. A very good job. And it was yeah. almost scary how good he was at playing both the uh, ignorant, happy-go-lucky character and mm. the grim, the like mob boss. Type yeah, <laughs> like it, yeah. Two completely different. Very good job. Very very Eddie Murphy. Very Tyler Perry of him <laughs> to, to yeah. do that. Yeah. But there, there weren't a lot of like, there weren't a lot of characters to begin with in the movie. Right. There aren't a lot of important ones after that being said, you know. So. Because you've got. It's really just the brothers Ernest Nash, um, the two cellmates, and the the female compatriot. If you choose to like put her in there, everything that develops is within those characters. Yeah. The the big big stuff. Yeah. The protagonist and the antagonist of the film are both played by Jim Varney, so you're going to get a good performance out of yeah. <laughs> both of those characters. And then you've got the brothers that you know will do well because they're often, you know, utilized in these films and they're very funny. Yeah. Their shtick is really good. It's all slapstick and it's and it's it's very hokey and thematic and it, it's funny. They work it very works. well together yeah. too. Just It's it's all about chemistry and they've got a ton of it. Yeah. But other than that, it's pretty straightforward family fair. Like, it's just positive, mm -hmm. no heavy thought needed, no lessons learned, no conversations after the fact about what did we just watch. Yeah, there you know? really wasn't. It was just like, yeah, okay, everybody's good now. It's all just right there. Yeah. And that's it. I, I still I still say that Ernest Scared Stupid is, is the better film, personally. It's an opinion thing. I definitely recommend both of them to everybody. Oh yeah. If I'm giving it a, a five star rating, if I'm giving one out of five stars, I'll give Ernest Goes to Jail probably like uh, 3.75 or a four, and I'll give Ernest Scared Stupid like a 4.5 to 4.7. Yeah, I feel the same. I'd say like four, four stars for both of them. Yeah, pretty even. <laughs> yeah, I mean like, I don't know, I, I will just need to watch all the other ones to decide how I like them all, really. I mean, like I had said earlier, I lean more towards Goes to Jail, but I think it is because it has more more mature settings and themes to it than the Stay yeah. Stupid does. Oh, absolutely, yeah. But both of them are still thoroughly enjoyable and very silly and they're just it's it's just a, a feel good kind of sit down and watch something. My track suggestion for this video is Eyeless by Slipknot. And what would yours be? How about um I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> but Ninja Sex Party. That song makes me happy every time I hear it. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's ridiculous. And I love it. And it's very relatable. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's good. Like, painfully relatable, honestly. Especially around somebody who talks as much as I do. <laughs> yeah, for sure, I talk too much. My movie suggestion for today is a little, it's kind of, it's well known with some people, not, not with others, but it'll be Waking Life. It's a movie from the early 2000s. If you enjoy conversations on existentialism and lucid dreaming and just lucid thought, you'll really enjoy the movie. It's a very interesting watch. It's it's essentially just a movie about a series of conversations. It's pretty good. Uh, if you like things like coffee and cigarettes, I think you'll like it. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And we want to say we appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much for being patient with us uh, as we get things together. Like and subscribe if you want to. Hit the bell so you know when we do put stuff out. And uh, really can't say enough how much I appreciate it. We're the Untitled Network. I'm Blake. I'm Rita. Have a good day. <laughs>
one shot.